Qatar is acknowledged worldwide as the third richest country in the world. The oil-rich Middle Eastern country is ruled by the Al Thani family, and today it is estimated that the royals have a staggering joint net worth of $335 billion. Let's look at their palatial residences and homes, starting with their grand residence on Qatar soil, the Doha Royal Palace. This palatial abode consists of 15 exquisite palaces that cost over $1 billion to build. You may be wondering why it costs that much. Let's start with the fact that it's practically coated in gold and has a car park that can accommodate more than 500 cars. I yes, you heard that right, 500 cars. The royal family has an immense love for cars. This is especially true of Khalifa bin Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, a 31-year-old prince with a collection that includes some of the most luxurious cars in the world. Lamborghinis, Bugattis, and Ferraris are are exclusive luxury cars that only the wealthy can afford. Yet this Qatar prince has cars from all these dealers, and not just one of each but multiple models. The Grand Palace also covers about 40,000 square feet. The Oman Royal Palace In 2019, yet another one was built in Oman by Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. Though it is shrouded in secrecy, we do know a few things about this palace. It overlooks the waters of Oman, and its construction began towards the end end of 2017 and was completed in 2019. Like the Doha Palace, it was built in white and coated in gold. The location of the Oman Palace is quite peculiar, as it is adjacent to the Al Saik military airport in the Jebel al Akhtar Mountains. The royal family's influence and wealth extend beyond Arab borders, as seen in their many investments and properties in other countries. They have a reputation as the biggest landowners in London, and will be looking at each of the properties they have acquired. Cornwall Terrace, Regent's Park, London. Sheikha Moza bint Nasser al Misned, one of the wives of the former emir, acquired three houses worth over $140 million on Cornwall Terrace. Jointly, the row of houses is said to be the most expensive anywhere in the world. The properties were purchased in 2013, and reports say she plans to repurpose the buildings into a grand 17 bedroom mansion with 14 lounges, a swimming pool, a cinema, and a juice bar. Why a juice bar, you may ask? Well, the royal family does not support the sale and consumption of alcohol for religious reasons. The emir even came under heavy criticism recently for banning the sale of alcohol at the World Cup stadiums. This directive came just a few hours before the tournament's opening and caused quite a ruckus. Remember what they say about acting like the Romans in Rome. Once completed, the Cornwall Mansion will be the most expensive residence in London, with a projected worth of over $300 million. Boo Arts Townhouses. Located on 79 East 72nd Street, it was purchased from the Lycée Francais School in 2002. It cost about $26 million. It was sold after the prestigious institution acquired its grand property and decided to sell its six facilities. The Boo Arts were the last two and the largest of the properties. After the royal family acquired the townhouses, they put in years of construction to combine them into a mega mansion. It includes two floors of bedrooms and bathrooms and an indoor swimming pool, a New York mansion. In 2017, the royal family of Qatar purchased a property in New York. Here's where it gets interesting. The $41 million mansion was acquired to house their maids alone. It is a 10,400 square foot residence, fully furnished with exquisite sitting rooms, bedrooms, lounge areas, a large kitchen, dining areas, a rooftop lounge, and outdoor gardens. The five-story building also has grand views of New York landscape and Central Park. Dedicated to their loyal servants, it sure speaks of comfort, with cozy rooms that even include special fireplaces. Built almost two decades ago, the Limestone Mansion tells the story of a blend between antique and modern interior excellence. It also includes eight bathrooms and an English basement. Reports indicate that it was purchased because of its proximity to two other properties purchased by the royal family, the Boo Arts townhouses previously mentioned. Forbes House the erstwhile emir acquired this property in 2018 for about $270 million. The Georgian mansion, which lies in the heart of London's Belgravia, is being reconstructed and renovated to become a 25-bedroom, six-story house. It will also have a large parking lot to accommodate 32 cars. Pictures also show a grand staircase in black and gold leading from the ground floor to the upper chambers. The ground floors house the library, guests' salon, 
salon, drawing room, dining hall, and 11 bedrooms for staff. The upper floors have both male and female master suites, six suites for children, and five guest suites. It gets even more interesting in the basement, with a treatment room, sauna, Turkish bath, gym, beauty room, and two plunge pools. Waterside Mansion in Turkey None other than the Qatar royals have acquired the most expensive waterside mansion in Turkey. At first, it was said to have been sold to a Qatari businessman, Abdul Hadi Mana Al Hajri, for over $100 million. However, further investigations revealed that the said businessman happens to be the father in law of Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad, the ruler of Qatar. In early 2015, the monarch visited Turkey in the company of his second wife, who developed a liking for the mansion. The the luxury residence, which made it to Forbes' list of the most expensive billionaire homes in the world, has 64 rooms and sits on about 6,000 square meters. Aside from residential apartments, the real estate portfolio of the royal family also includes commercial buildings and projects. One of such is the tallest building in London's landscape, which cost about $2.5 billion, the Shard Skyscraper. At 310 meters, this is the tallest building in London. London, and one look at it clarifies why it was named the Shard. The outline of the structure resembles a shard of glass stretching from the ground into the sky. The aerial city has 95 stories, with residential apartments ending on the 72nd floor. There are about 5,000 people who live and work in its beautiful spaces. A 360-degree view of London is one of the fascinating things you can experience on the topmost floor. The beautiful view has even made it a choice spot for lovebirds to have memorable moments with proposals and weddings. The Shard has seven world-class restaurants, event spaces, captivating art pieces, and the phenomenal Shangri-La Hotel, where you can swim in one of the highest pools in the world. It is important to mention that the Qatar royal family deserves accolades for bringing the vision for this project to life. Irvine Seller began the project in the year 2000, but faced immense challenges, including a global economic crash that almost killed the dream. In 2008, Qatar came on board and the Shard was launched just four years later in 2012. Another pointer to the fact that their wealth is the product of visionary thinking. Harrods. The royal family also has stakes in some of London's household names, including the dear Harrods chain of stores. It is one of the most famous and exquisite department stores in London. It has built quite a reputation since its inception in 1840, catering to a variety of goods and services, including high-end luxury items like gold and diamonds. It is the only store where you need to be dressed a certain way or you'll be denied entry. People who dress shoddily are turned away at the doors. It was bought for $2.4 billion in 2010 from Mohammed Al-Fayed, an Egyptian-born businessman. Since it was acquired by the Qatari, they have worked endlessly to continue to uphold its legacy and diversify its portfolio. Yet this is not all. The Canary Wharf Financial Complex in London's Docklands, the Ritz Hotel, a penthouse at One Hyde Park, which is the most expensive apartment block in the world, an industrial unit in the West Sussex town of Crawley, an Essex farm, and a large chunk of London's Olympic Village are all part of the family's hefty portfolio. In 2017, The Telegraph reported that the Qataris owned more of London than even the Queen. Other investments of the royal family in the city include 20% share of Camden Market, 25% of Sainsbury's, 7% of Barclays, 20% of Heathrow Airport Holdings, 7% of the London Stock Exchange. In a 2010 interview with Financial Times, the former emir, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, remarked, We are investing everywhere. Even your Herods, we took it. This is quite an interesting and audacious statement. Well, that happens when you have money to get any home you choose at any location. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe. Click on any of the videos on the screen to see more captivating content.